Hello, welcome to our R&D lab based out of Lakewood, Colorado. Behind me, you'll be able to see a row of our quantum devices. And this is a similar to the scale out approach that our GMP customers are using today. The quantum system is an automated and functionally closed system designed to simplify the open labor intensive tasks associated with manual cell culture. It's been successfully used by our academic and biotech customers for adherent and suspension cell production, exosomes, and viral vectors. The quantum we'll talk about today is a perfusion hollow fiber based system. We continuously feed and remove waste at a rate that suits the cell culture process. Bags for media, PBS, and waste are hung on this bag pole here. All connections are made with a validated sterile welder, the TSCDQ right here, and disconnected with an RF sealer. On the touchscreen, you can monitor the run status in the settings, the fluid pathway, the rates, the temperature, and you can command the system to run a task or to configure the device. Quantum's flexibility allows you to configure most of your settings to suit your process. The Quantum set we'll review today is functionally closed and pre-assembled and quite easy for operators to load. Because the Quantum's a closed system, you have the potential of reducing your facility costs. Here we have loaded a set onto the system. There are several accessory bags and kits to connect to these lines, and the set comes pre-assembled with a waste bag and a harvest bag. Let me open up the device. Here, there are four pumps and 11 valves throughout the system that control the sources of fluid and the rates of flow throughout the entire tubing assembly, depending on your protocol. There are fluid, pressure, and temperature sensors that will trigger alarms if anomalies are detected. The bioreactor is actually where the cells are gonna reside. And we have a bioreactor cut out of another disposable Josh is holding up here. Think of it like a Pringles can turned on its side, packed with 11,500 semi-permeable fibers or straws. There are two separate environments here, an IC or intracapillary space inside those hollow fibers and an EC or extracapillary space surrounding those hollow fibers. This enables us to use two different reagents and to individually control those fluid flow rates as well. Cells are always gonna sit inside those hollow fibers. This is a design principle for efficient nutrient and gas exchange. For adherent cells, this is gonna provide a 21,000 centimeter squared surface area, equivalent to 120 of your T175 flasks. For suspension cells, the effective working volume within the bioreactor is 139 mils, but the unique dual loop pathway allows for much higher cell densities. This bioreactor can hold a range, but upwards of 25 billion T cells. The dual loop also allows for a maximum harvest efficiency allowing for small harvest volumes of 430 to 700 mils. This will ease your downstream processing needs. Samples can be easily taken from either the IC or the EC environment. For suspension cells and larger molecules, you'll remove part of the sampling coil here using a sterile welder. For simple metabolite measurements to measure the run progress, we simply pull samples from the port plug using a Lorlox syringe. Lactate is used quite reliably in our customer sites. Gas is fed from the gas tank into the disposable via the gas inlet line and into the gas transfer module with the GTM. Just like the bioreactor, the GTM here has hollow fibers that allow for maximum surface area for gas exchange into and out of the culture medium. Quantum's use of perfusion gas exchange allows for expansion of very high concentration of cells for, its, for instance, in a recent publication, we demonstrated 240 million T cells per mil were expanded while maintaining low PD-1 expression. Due to the res de resulting degree of this culture efficiency, very high cell yields are possible in the quantum, despite what might be a lower total volume compared to other systems. This bioreactor allows for a maximum harvest efficiency with a small volume of just 700 mils to ease your downstream processing needs. If for any reason power is lost during the run, the quantum is going to automatically restart and undergo a system recovery. It will be restored to the state it was at the time the peril failure occurred and produce a warning alarm to indicate this anomaly. The quantum already comes with some predefined tasks that Josh is going to take us through next for common steps such as loading, attaching cells, feeding, and harvesting. 
Each task can comprise of single or multiple steps, and the system can automatically move to the next step when the stop condition is fully satisfied. For instance, we'll look at a feed cells task. You can set it and run it with the default settings, or you can change the settings simply by clicking this modify button. Here you can change the reagents, flow rates, and stop condition, for instance, time. You can also set up custom tasks similar to the one that we have programmed here. In this custom task, we have two different steps, but you can run up to 99 steps in each custom task. Let's talk more about configuring the device to better suit your needs. Here, you can change the display settings, the system settings, and the task settings and set up user permissions. Once your protocol parameters are set up, you can store them in the system's memory through configuring the default task settings. On this task settings page, you can see there's a purple button here, which is labeled configure and any changes that will be saved here will become the new default task settings. However, you can reset these back to factory defaults by pressing the yellow reset button. Additionally, you can lock these settings such that the operator will not be able to change them when performing a task. Therefore, Quantum is going to be really flexible for your process development needs, but can be locked down with set protocols for GMP operations. Let's review a little bit more about user permissions. We can turn on user authentication, and manage and add users to the system. Particularly for manufacturing, we realize user authentication is key. Let's add a user to the system. The unique user ID here can be a company ID or an extension number, and he or she can have a unique password. You can assign either an operator role or an administrator role to this user, depending on how much autonomy they need in their role. And here, you can manage all the, the users and their roles. Run reports can also be generated for each run, run, quantum run you perform. You can configure the system to generate these run reports, set the system to automatically send them to a server via the ethernet port on the back of the device, and set frequency of temperature and pressure records, for example. The run reports can also be exported into three different formats, an XML, a CSV, or PDF for integration into your current laboratory management system. Reports can be viewed in the Utilities tab. And there are three different run reports, uh, I'm sorry, report types. There's a run report, a user report, and a configuration report. Let's view the current run report. This run report contains all information about a single run, including each task that was performed and any modification, any alarms, and all sign-in errors that occurred during the run. You can also view stored runs here. If you're not an administrator, however, you can only view them and not edit any of these reports. As we've shown today, Quantum's extremely flexible for your research and development needs and can seamlessly transition into GMP production. Many customers around the world have adopted Quantum as their choice platform for a multitude of cell types and applications, such as MSCs, exosomes, viral vectors, and T-cells.